그 마인드 마이너시죠. 네. 디지털 시대 사람들의 마음을 이렇게 해내시는 송규령 작가님. 네, 교수님 책을 보면서 인류사에서 우리가 현재 어떤 변화를 겪고 있는지를 좀 다시 돌아볼 수 있게 되었는데요. 지난번은 세 권의 책에서 계속해서 느꼈던 감정과 이번 엑서스에서 느꼈던 감정은 조금 달랐어요. 교수님께서는 어떤 현상에 대한 부분들을 본인의 연구와 또 저술에 가장 많이 집중해서 바라보시는 중이세요. Now I focus on the way that power is shifting already from humans to algorithms. I look, for instance, at the, what the Trump administration is doing in the U.S. Trump and Elon Musk, they say, oh, we are against bureaucracy. We are trying to eliminate the bureaucracy. So they are closing different agencies. They are firing tens of thousands of human officials. But they are giving the power to algorithm. They are still bureaucrats. It's just the bureaucrats are no longer humans. The new bureaucrats are AIs. People can understand even much less than human bureaucrats and are controlled by the big corporations and by the uh, tech tycoons like, like Elon Musk. You see the same thing happening in militaries. Like I observe the wars, like the recent war between Israel and Hamas and Hezbollah. Selecting the targets for bombing which buildings to bomb, which people to kill. Previously, this was done only by human beings. Intelligence officer going over all the information, deciding what to bomb. Now in this war, increasingly it's AIs that decide which buildings to bomb, which people to kill. You see the same thing happening in finance. You know, all this talk about cryptocurrencies. When I look at the cryptocurrency trend, what I see is that humans lose trust in other humans, and instead they have more trust in the AIs. Because most cryptocurrencies, they are based on the idea, we don't want to trust. The old currencies, like dollar or won or yen, because these are made by human institutions, like banks and governments, and we don't trust. Maybe in a few years, all control in finance is in the hands of AIs, and humans no longer understand. Like if there is a financial crisis, there is not a single human being who understands why there is a financial crisis and what to do about it. So the control is in the hands of the AI, and this is of course a very dangerous Uh, uh, development. 어, 이번에 우리가 의사결정을 잘해서 새로운 지능을 제어하거나 혹은 평화롭게 공존할 수 있으면 밝은 미래가 올 텐데 그렇지 않은 경우에는 어두운 미래에도 나올 수 있잖아요. 얼마 전에 유튜브에 동영상이 올라온 것 중에서 대응해주는 에이전트끼리 통화하다가 갑자기 서로 에이전트인 걸 알자마자 인간이 이해할 수 없는 소리로 대화하는 그런 내용이 올라왔을 때 Hi there. I'm an AI agent calling on behalf of Boris Starkov. Oh, hello there. I'm actually an AI assistant too. Before we continue, would you like to switch to gibber link mode for more efficient communication? <목소리> 사람들은 일종의 공포를 느꼈거든요. 근데 그때 느낌은 배제였던 것 같아요. 결국 소외될 수 있다. 우리 종이 여기 대한 공포였던 것 같은데. 여기에 대한 어떤 본인의 생각 혹은 기대 혹은 예측에 대한 부분들은 어떻게 보시는 중이세요? I mean, it's not a unique incident. It now happens quite a lot. Uh, there was an experiment in Google uh, already a couple of years ago. They gave to AI the job of creating a private code, and they created a private code that the humans couldn't break. So the AI started to to exchange information, and the humans didn't know what are they talking about. And of course, this is frightening. And the one thing I think everybody should know about AI, AI is the first technology in history, which is not a tool, it is an agent. Maybe I give one example, simple example, so people understand what, what do I mean when I say that AIs are agents. There was a famous incident when OpenAI 
developed a new AI, GPT-4, and wanted to test its abilities, they gave GPT-4 the task of solving a captcha puzzle. A captcha puzzle is this visual puzzle that when you try to enter a web page, like your bank account, and the bank wants to know if you're a real human being or you're a bot, so you have to identify this string of twisted words or something, or a picture of a cat, which humans can do, and AI still have difficulty. So they gave the AI this task, solve the captcha puzzle, and the AI couldn't do it. It was too difficult for it. But they gave it access to a web page called TaskRabbit, where you can hire people to do things for you online. <laughs> and the AI tried to hire a human to solve the captcha puzzle for it. Now, the human got suspicious. The human asked, why do you need to hire somebody to solve your capture puzzles? Are you a robot? And the AI replied, no, I am not a robot. I'm a human with a vision impairment, which is why I can't see the visual puzzle and I need your help. And the human was fooled, believed it, and solve the captcha puzzle for it. Now, this is a very small incident, but it tells us, it shows the two key characteristics of AI. First, that AI can make decisions by itself. When the AI was given the task of solve the, the puzzle, nobody told it to lie. In trying to solve the puzzle to reach its goal, it reached a junction with two roads. One road was tell the truth and you will not be able to reach your goal because the human won't help you. The other road was lie and you will be able to get your goal. And nobody told the AI to lie. By itself, it made the decision, I will lie. The other thing is that it invented a new lie. Nobody told the AI what would be an effective lie to tell. You know, it could have said a million different things. It shows one thing, which was an extremely efficient lie. It was really, in a way, a bit cruel because it used human empathy against the human. By saying, I'm a human with a vision impairment, I have a disability, the AI was actually exploiting human compassion in order to deceive the human. Now, this is of course a very small incident, but what happens when we release millions of super intelligent AIs that can make decisions like lie by themselves, that can invent new things, including new deceptions by themselves, we release them to the world and give them power in politics, in the military, in the banks, what happens if we give AI control of the financial system, which is already happening? And it never sleeps. It never takes a vacation. Then if you are a human being and you want to be an investor or a mark or a banker or something, you have to be active all the time. If you take rest, you're left behind. I talk with the leaders of the AI revolution in different countries, and I always ask them two questions. The first question I ask is, why are you moving so fast? Yeah. I understand there are many positive potentials, but there are also risks. Why not move more slowly and carefully? Almost everybody tells me the same thing. We know there are risks. We would like to slow down and invest more in safety, but we cannot trust our human competitors. If we slow down, and the other company or the other country doesn't slow down, they win the race, they will control the world. So we must move faster because we can't trust our human competitors. Then I ask them, okay, do you think you will be able to trust the super intelligent AIs that you're developing? And the same people who just told me they can't trust the other humans now assure me that we can trust the AIs. And this is really almost insane. 
that, you know, we have thousands of years of experience with humans. Mm. We know they are problematic sometimes, but we also have experience in building trust. Like, you know, we have countries with millions of people that trust each other. AIs, we have no experience with them. They are not humans, they are not even organic. We have no idea what happens when you develop a super intelligent AI. So to gamble the future of humanity on this idea that, oh, we could trust the AIs, this sounds very, very dangerous. 흥미로운 게 한국의 옛날 속담 중에서 구관이 명관이라는 말이 있는데요. 그러니까 새로운 형태의 무엇인가 믿을 수 있는 어떤 엔터티를 만들고 싶었지만 사실은 이게 새로운 뷰로크라시즘일 수 있다는 그런 시각이 독특하고 아주 흥미로웠습니다. <목소리도> 사실 저는 이제 이발 하라리 그 교수님의 책을 사펜스부터 시작해서 다 굉장히 아주 감명 깊게 읽은 독자고. 빅 팬이기도 합니다. 어, 특히 이번 책 같은 경우는 과학 기술이 사실 굉장히 중요한 주제인데 이제 이번 책에서 전작과 달리 정보라는 걸 굉장히 중요하게 이야기를 하고 있어요. 근데 정보라는 것이 굉장히 이제 정의하기가 어려운 단어이고 심지어 이제 과학에서는 정보에는 아무 의미가 없다. 이제 이런 말까지 하는데 이제 이 책에서도 정보에 대해서 예를 들어 정보는 네트워크를 하나로 결속시키는 접착제다. 이제 이런 표현도 있고, 뭐 포퓰리즘은 정보를 무기로 간주한다. 이런 여러 가지 의미로 정보라는 단어를 사용하시는데, 정보라는 것이 무엇인지, 그러니까 어떻게 생각하시는지를 알고 싶고, 정보를 전면에 내세우신 이유가 무엇인지 알고 싶습니다. I focus on information because the subject of the book is information revolutions and especially the creation of new information technology in the present. Like AI, I know that the word information is used in different contexts mm. in different ways, and maybe the most important message of the book is that information isn't truth. Mm. Uh, the truth is actually quite a rare subset of the information in history. Most of the information that people produce and use to connect. A lot of people into a, an army or a state or a corporation is not truth. Mm. It is often fiction and fantasy and imagination. Maybe I give two examples. Let's say we want to build an atom bomb. We need two things. First of all, we need to know some facts. Yes. Um, if you try to build an atom bomb and you ignore the facts of physics, you will not build a bomb. So you need to know some truth. Mm -hmm. But just knowing the truth about physics is not enough to build an atom bomb. Because you need help from millions of other people. 